Hello, and welcome back to Mini Adventures Mini. So just to start off, I'd like to apologize that I didn't get my video out last week. I had some stuff pile up and I wasn't able to get to it. For future reference, if anything like this happens again in the future, I'm putting updates out on my Facebook page for the YouTube channel since I don't currently meet the qualifications to be able to send out notifications directly with YouTube. So if you want to keep up to date with the, that sort of information, please go to the Facebook page. I'll put a link down in the description and follow there to get any updates like that. But getting back on topic, so uh, this week I wanted to do another one of the Artisan Guild uh, models. Uh, I've been really enjoying their stuff. I don't print all of the stuff that I get from them just because I don't have an immediate use for it but I like to print out some of the coolest stuff that I just want to paint. So uh, to go along with that, this week I'm painting, uh, I think it's pronounced Xantroth, Xantroth or something along that line. Uh, it's the bonus epic boss from Artisan Guild this month is a giant lizard crocodile-like champion. He's got a couple of different permutations to him. Uh, I went with him having two swords and a crocodile head, but he also has like a demon toad head and a big hammer you can use, and uh, it's a really cool model, so I'll leave a link to the Artisan Guild Patreon so you can take a look at it if you're interested, uh, but let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and jump into the painting of that now. Alright, so starting here, uh, this is the new method I'm going to be trying to use for presenting my before and after setups for these miniatures going forward. So I have this guy all assembled and painted up with the, just the primer layer here just to have a good base to start with, but there's a good thorough look at what he looks like before I get any real painting started. Just the blank canvas at this point. And here I'm using some liquid inks. I have a black, a medium gray, and a white. Uh, I got these because they run really smoothly through my airbrush, and I wanted to see if I could get a nice, smooth Zenithel highlight using these. And overall, I think I got a pretty good effect out of it, and I'll probably do this again in the future. Though the main thing to keep in mind using this method is that the inks take a bit longer to set, and if you try to paint on them, before they've had a good probably an hour or so to dry and set properly you're gonna start pulling ink up and you don't really want that but uh, I just give everything a thorough coat in the black mostly trying to get the undersides and then I do about a 45 degree angle of the medium gray and then mostly a 90 degree spray of the white and once I've let that set up as much as I can I come in here with this orc flesh contrast paint it's the Citadel color contrast paint uh, I, I haven't messed too much with contrast paint in the past, but I've been wanting to experiment more with it, and I thought this model looked like it might be a good test case to see if it would work under these circumstances. So I did the Zenithil undercoat to try and take advantage of uh, the, the different properties that you get with contrast paint over normal paints. And I'm just trying to get a thorough coating across him, trying to be careful to, trying to be very careful not to get the paint anywhere I don't want it because this contrast paint, well, slightly translucent, so it shows through the effects of my Zenithil more directly than I might otherwise see with normal paint. It is also very high, highly pigmented, so if a little bit gets where you don't want it to, it will very much show up and it's difficult to just remove. So you can see I'm trying to be uh, a bit meticulous and I'm trying not to get too much on there since I don't want it to be sitting too thickly. And I just go around and give everything a nice coat. And this was a reasonable way of getting this done quickly. I don't think this is like the fastest way to do this. I probably could have done this more easily, like a different method. Uh, I. I for this particular one, just getting like the whole body with this green, this is a technique that I might use if I'm trying to get a lot of guys done or something, or if I just got a small part that I want to hit on. So I, I'm doing the same thing here. I'm throwing some red contrast onto his uh, loincloth there, and I'm using this skeleton horde uh, 
bone based one on his uh, back spikes here and I actually really do like this one because it kind of gets me the same effect I usually get just by doing my skeleton bone color with the uh, wash that I normally do and this is all in one step so th that's something I might just do by itself in the future is just throw on that skeleton horde instead of doing my two-step wash because it seems to work a bit better to me <laughs> and then I'm going with uh, the black contrast on these swords to me they kind of look like some sort of obsidian stone swords uh, somewhat primitive but not completely so that's the effect I'm getting from him this entire lizard set that this guy is uh, kind of related to it has kind of a aztec -y feeling going on. Uh, you can see I'm applying a little bit more of the uh, skeleton bone color to these different uh, spikes and whatnot coming off of here. Getting this horde color on. And I, I feel like this has an even stronger effect with the zenithal color. I really like the effect that I get from it. But I'm uh, done with the contrast paints for now. Uh, I'm coming in with my Army Painter Greedy Gold color. I do really like the Army Painter metallics. They go on very smooth. Uh, most of the other golds I've tried uh, have to do multiple coats. And this one goes on nice and smooth. Very little need to go back over it most of the time. Uh, it's so, They're some of my favorite metallics to work with. And they're just great and uh, I, I, I try to experiment with a lot of different stuff when I can but I do like the army painter metallics a lot they're some of like I think they're just some of the easiest to work with and you don't have to fuss around with them as much which is something I really like and they maintain pigment enough that it makes it easier to do some detail work with them whereas if you have to go over too many times it makes doing detail work difficult and so that, that's why you want good coverage in the initial coat with metallics like this it's maybe a little less important with like silvers depending on how you're using it if you're covering like armor or whatnot it's not as big a deal but when you're doing like little bits like jewelry or uh, doing uh, like just embellishments or whatnot it's a lot easier to be able to do it once if needed. Um, and then for the base of the ropes I'm using this dark desert yellow color just to get the base of the ropes on there and th that's more or less all I really do with it. I'll have a few more touch-ups to do with it a bit later on but this gets the general idea in there pretty quickly and easily without any real difficulty in there. And then I'm coming in here with the skeleton bone because there are a few delicate little areas I wasn't able to just ignore with my contrast paint. Just his claws on his hands and feet as well as his teeth. It was just a little bit too delicate to try and get the contrast paint on there while not hitting those areas. So just a slight weakness of the paint there. It's nothing really special, it just means I need to go back to my original technique. The end look is very similar, so it's not really all that strange anyways. Though I am still really happy with that skeleton horde color. It really looks a lot like what I'd go for. I, I might have to uh, get a set of skeletons just to play around with that and see if that's good for getting a bunch of skeletons painted quickly. Might very well be, so... That's the, that, that is what the contrast paint is kind of marketed towards, is being able to get stuff painted quickly. I tend to find that's not really like the best application of it. I, I find it, that it helps in certain situations more than others. And that's kind of what I learned a lot with this. But I'm using the matte black here and this mummy white. Uh, first off, I'm getting my eyes going. Just a base of the black with a little bit of the mummy robes in there to get the whites of the eyes. Make sure I get that in as thoroughly as I can. And then I'm putting a little bit of demonic yellow there on my palette. Uh, this guy's eyes are big enough that I'm going to add some yellow in there so he has some yellow irises. This doesn't really show up super well in the final bit, but after that I add some slitted pupils and you get exactly what you need. I also try to go over the ropes a little bit with some 
wash down yellow to kind of brighten it up a little bit. And then I come to the raised ridges with some watered down demonic yellow just to get a little bit of a glaze effect. And I'm just going over some individual scales and some raised areas to add a little bit of a highlighting effect since the contrast paint ends up being really dark and to add a little bit of color variation and tint the sky more towards a yellow green rather than just a dark green. And I think that had a better effect overall and gives better contrast between the upper brighter side of the model and the under side that I left pretty much alone after I had it with the black from the Zenithil and then just the green contrast paint put over it. So you can tell that it's a dark green and it's in shadow and you get some nice contrast there which you'll be able to see here towards the end but this is a little bit of a tedious process you're just going over the same scales over and over until you get the opacity of the color you're tinting here doing just a little bit of this is what we call glazing and and maybe finding any areas that I might have missed like these ropes around his wrist making sure I get the right colors in where they're supposed to be just going around getting everything. Uh, here I have some colored inks as well. Uh, I thinned this down a little bit just to try and see if I could make a pseudo wash just to go in the crevices on this, uh, of the, in the design on this sword here. And it didn't quite work the way I was hoping it would. It ended up just kind of tinting the entire thing a red color. And I kept trying to get the effect I was going for, and it was just turning the whole thing red. So eventually I just go for it and pretty much uh, soak the insides of those swords with red. Uh, and I'm going for almost kind of like a arid, swampy area. It, it, more more like arid, less swamp. But just like some arid plains with a bit of grass on here. So I throw that desert yellow down. Uh, put my black around the edge of the base just to get it all nice and cleaned up the way I like. Make sure everything's nice and neat. Get my rocks done. Uh, get some uh, skeleton bone on these skulls here as well. Just trying to get all of my colors in very basically. Make sure everything's the way I like it. Then I'm coming in with my Burnt Umber Wash, and I'm just touching on all the areas I put the bone color before. Just trying to get it all to the right shade and stain it a little bit, have it match the spikes on his back, at least to some degree here. And then I go ahead and I get the wrapping around this sword. I'm starting with this white, and I'll probably come back with that wash later just to dirty it up, make it look like a dirty linen wrapping or something along those lines. Uh, here you can see I'm actually applying some glue to the base now that the, uh, the paint has dried, just to add a little bit of additional texturing on here. I'm just trying to be careful to get it on as little of the model as possible. And here you can see I'm using some unsanded uh, tile grout. I'm trying to get kind of like a dusty, sandy texture. Uh, it gets quite, it makes quite the mess on the model, and I'm not sure I'll be trying this again because it required a lot of extra cleanup that I really didn't like dealing with. I had to take another brush and dust them off, and even get a wet brush or a damp brush anyway to soak up some of the tile grout that got where it was not supposed to be. And here you can see I'm tinting the insides of the swords again, um, getting a little bit of this pure red to add some additional highlights on his loincloth because it is really dark, so I'm brightening it up a little bit with some additional highlights. That makes it stand out a little bit more. Uh, not doing anything special, just grabbing some of the raised areas and throwing some red on it just to make it stand out a little bit. And then more layers of red in the sword. Uh, like I said, I've given up on just getting it in the creases and now it's just that whole inside crevice area. And here I'm adding more glue to the base, just in patches this time, not the whole thing. And then I take this static grass and I just kind of shake it over the base and 
smack it off, tap it a bit, getting the excess removed just so that I have uh, these little patches of grass. There are better ways to apply static grass, but this is the one I went through. And here you can see I'm going back with more of my uh, burnt umber wash, trying to get everything all settled. I'm, I'm getting into the home stretch here, just doing some final touches, dry brushing the rocks sitting on here, making sure I get everything. I'm doing my best just to make sure I don't miss any little details. I, I, there's not very much for me to do since I let the contrast paint do a lot of my work. That's what I was going for. I do think that if I had gone in with more of a hand approach uh, doing this rather than trying to let the contrast paint do the work for me, I would have been able to get a much more direct effect that I wanted. Uh, and this moon dust is just a, a last dry brush layer that I'm using on the rocks here on the base. But after this, I've decided I've gotten to the best point I'm going to be able to get it, so I use my last step to put my matte varnish through my airbrush, cover everything as thoroughly as possible, especially the base since I had some of that loose powder, trying to make sure that is all thoroughly covered and soaked down so it sets properly, and give everything a thorough coating. And here you can see my final piece. Uh, overall, I'm perfectly happy with this. I feel like I could have done better, but I'm not unhappy with how it came out. It does still look pretty cool. And the contrast paint is pretty cool. I just don't think I necessarily would use it in this specific type of application again. I'll have to fiddle with it in the future and see how I want to use it. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun messing around with this one, trying out some new techniques and seeing what I could pull off. I think that it would have been possible for me to paint it to a higher standard than what I achieved, but I feel like I learned a lot about the materials I was working with this time. So with that, uh, if you have any feedback, please leave a comment down in the description. I love reading any feedback I can get. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. That helps out a lot. And if you want to see any more of my videos, uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload any of my videos in the future. And if you would like to help support me, please take a look at the links in the description to my Patreon page and my Etsy store where you can purchase some of the models that I paint and put up for sale. And with that, I hope to see everybody back again next week.